In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at one simple plugin that does three things incredibly well. Backs up, restores and migrates your WordPress website with ease. Best of all, it's totally free. So if you're interested, stick around and I'm going to show you that plugin right now. My name is Paul C and welcome to WP Tuts. If you want to get the most out of WordPress, start by hitting that subscribe button and smashing the bell icon below to be notified every time new content is added to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be checking out a plugin from WP Vivid, their backup and migration plugin. Now this is completely free and they have sponsored this video, but it's not a review video. It's just basically me showing you what this plugin does and then letting you make up your own mind whether you think it's a plugin you'd like to check out yourself. Okay, so what exactly does it do? Well, we all know we should, could, and would make backups with WordPress, but we don't always do it because it doesn't always come across as being the easiest thing to do. Well, this plugin does make it easy. And in this video, I'm gonna demonstrate just how easy it is to create your backups, to restore your website, but also how to migrate your WordPress website. This is great if you're creating a website on one server and you wanna move it somewhere else, or you're working on a client's website and then when you're ready to go live, you wanna transfer that over. This makes the whole process painless. So let's just jump into WordPress, fire up the plugin, and see how we can start making our first backup. So now that I've gone ahead and installed WP Vivid backup plugin, one of the first things we can do is come into the settings and we can start to configure things. Now, as you can see, I'm in the backup and restore tab, and we have a range of other options, and we'll take a look at some of those as we go through the process. But the backup and restore section is where we can go and set up some of the basics. So we can do things like choose what to backup, whether it's just the database, the database and the files, in example, the entire website, or all files excluding the database. We can also do things like choose how and where we want to backup. So we've got options to save locally, so it'll save it to our server. We can also set it up to save to a range of different locations. So we can set up and configure things like FTP, SFTP. We can go to things like Google Drive or Dropbox. So most of the usual culprits are in there and they're easy to set up. And in this video, we'll take a look at how we can set things up to save to our Dropbox account. But all those other options are available to you. You can also do things like create manual backups, or you can set things up to automate the backup process over a range of different time periods. So this is very useful if you have a site that's quite regularly updated, new content, sales maybe, for example, on an e-commerce website. Setting a regular backup is something that's going to be easy. You can set it and forget it, which is great. So like I said, first thing we need to do is set up where we want to save our files to. Now it's worth noting at this point, you can't have it go to do two different locations at the same time. So for example, you couldn't have a local setup and being sent off to a remote storage location like Dropbox. You have to choose one or the other. So bear that in mind when you're setting things up. So if we take a look at the tabs at the top, you can see we've got remote storage as one of the options. If we click to go into there, we can now go through and choose from all the range of different options and locations for where we can save our backups. Now for this example, we're going to use Dropbox, but you can see as we go through, we get different settings and requirements for each one of these. So whichever one you want to use as your main storage location, click on that option and then you can configure the details. So with Dropbox, we simply have to give it an informational name. So in other words, something that makes sense to where we're going to store this. You can see we then have the option to say set as default remote storage. And finally, we have the option to authenticate with our Dropbox account. So obviously, you're going to need to make sure that you signed into your Dropbox account for that automation process. But I'm going to go ahead, put the details in there, authenticate it, and then we can move on. So I've given it a Dropbox informational name. I've set it as my default. I'm going to click on authenticate with Dropbox. That's going to go through the process now of confirming that I'm happy to have the details linked between the two. So you can see it's given me a warning to say, make sure that you're happy with this process. I'll say continue. You see that now wants to link to the actual account. So I'm going to say allow that. And once that's completed, we should then have the link between Dropbox and WP Vivid Backup and allow us to start using it as our storage location. So now that we've been authenticated with Dropbox, we've got a couple of things we need to do before we start making backups. First of all, let's just jump over to our remote storage option. We can see that if we look at the bottom, we've now got the storage locations. You can see we've got Dropbox backup chosen in there, and we've got the storage locations, which would be listed if we had multiple set up. What we're going to do is make sure that we check Dropbox and save the changes. So we now say that's where we want to save it to out of the choices that we have available. And if we just jump back over to the backup and restore option, you can see now that Dropbox is highlighted as the chosen location for any remote storage. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we want to use the database and the files, the entire website. We're going to choose send to backup to remote storage. And now we've got pretty much everything in place to start testing this out and working. 
Now you can see we've got a big button that says backup now. And it also tells us this backup can only be deleted manually. So we'd have to manually go in and remove that. So we've put the things we need in place. We've set up the link with Dropbox. We're now ready to test this out for our first backup. So let's just choose backup now. That will then go through the process of creating the backup for us. Now you can see at the top it's given us some information about the backup. You can see at the moment it's pretty much blank other than some basic information. And this is going to update as the backup is created and then transferred from the server that your website resides on over to your Dropbox account. So we'll give it a few moments to let it go through and complete that process. Once that's done, we'll take a look at what's happened to our Dropbox account. And there we go. We're now notified at the top, say one backup task has been completed. Please switch to the log page to check the details. So we click on the log page. You can see there's the list of all of the details, all the backups we've done, the times, the file names, and so on. And if we want to, we can take a look at the log file that's associated with it. Now switching over to our Dropbox folder, you can see that there's our backups listed in there, all zipped up with dates and timestamps associated with them. So we can see exactly when these were created, the dates, the times, and so on. If we open the file, the folder up, we can see inside there, we've got a range of different zipped folders for our content, our core database plugins, themes, and uploads. We've also got a JSON file. Now, this JSON file is going to be used when we actually use the restore function inside WP Vivid. So all the files are in there, everything you should need, along with a very quick and easy way able to restore everything back when you're ready to. So as you can see, making backups is incredibly simple. That's the manual way. How about taking a look at how to schedule this to do it automatically in the background without the need for us to actually create this manually every single time. So now that we've seen how easy it is to do a manual backup, how do we go about doing scheduled backups? Again, very easy. Let's just jump over to the schedule tab. And as you can see, we've got some options available. First of all, we can enable or disable the automatic scheduled backup. If we enable that, you can see it gives us a little bit of information on how this is going to work. So as we can see, the scheduled job will start at the web server time. Now this isn't necessarily the same time as your local time. If you're dealing with a server in a different country, then you have to take into consideration the time zone differences. Also, you can see we've got this is subject to PHP and it being triggered by at least one visit to your page. So it doesn't matter what page, as long as someone visits your site in any given period, then it will automatically trigger that particular backup for you. The next set of options are when do you want the backup to run? Do you want to do it every 12 hours, daily, weekly, fortnightly or monthly? Then we can go through and choose the options like we saw in the first stage where we did a manual backup. We can choose what we want to backup and we can choose where do we want to back it up to. And again, you can see we have the option to do it locally or we can do it remotely onto somewhere like Dropbox or something. So all the same options are there. This is just the automated version. So you can set whatever options you want in there, hit save changes. And then as long as someone visits your site on a given day to trigger this, then that backup will run. So for popular sites, this should be no problem at all. So now that we've seen how to make backups, what about restoring those backups or restoring a site that may be damaged or just needs to be restored for any other reason? Well, you cover it in two different ways. If we scroll down, you can see any backups we currently have stored will be listed at the bottom underneath the backups tab. From here, it'll give us information about the date, the type, whether it's manual or automatic, where it's stored. We can download directly from here if we want to. We can delete any of these, but also we can go through the option to restore. So we can, if we want to, use any of these to restore our site back to the point where we took that particular backup. Obviously, if you don't have them listed here and you've made a manual backup or remote backup that's not listed, you've deleted it from here, whatever reason, you're still covered. All you need to do is jump over to the Upload tab, and in there, if we scroll down, you can see we can drag and drop any of the zip files that are created as our backup. Now, the one thing you have to bear in mind, they have to be WP Vivid backups. You can't have a backup from your server or somewhere else that's been done separately and expect those to work inside this plugin. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. But as long as your backups are done from WP Vivid, then you're all covered. So let's take a look at running a backup. Jump back over to the Backups tab, we'll scroll down and we'll say we want to restore the most recent backup. As you can see, we can see that is done today, June 3rd, and also the time, so we can check between these two backups. All I need to do is click on Restore, and then I'll trigger the process for restoring our site from that backup. So we'll click on Restore, you can see that brings us over, gives us a little notification saying, please don't stop this as you're going through, etc, etc, etc. We'll click on Restore and let this then go through the process of restoring our site from that backup. So we'll hit restore. It says, are you sure you want to continue? We'll say, okay, yes, we do. 
So what that's doing now is that's downloading the backup file from our remote storage location. Once that's done, it will then go through the process of reinstalling our entire website. So I'm gonna let that run. Once that's finished, I'll come back and we'll continue the stage. And there we go. After a couple of minutes, we get a little notification popping up saying the restoration, the restore is completed. So we can click on okay. And that's the process completed. Doesn't get much simpler than that. So hopefully what you can see is making your backups, whether that's an automated backup, a scheduled backup, or doing it manually, and also the restoration process are all very quick and very easy to deal with. So that's the process of dealing with backups and restoring. What about migrating your website from one location to another? Can you do that inside WP Vivid Backup? Yes, you can, and it's very easy. If we jump over to auto migration, you can see what we can do is we can now start the process of transferring a site from one location to another. So there's a couple of things we need to do before we can actually go through this migration process. First and most important thing is on the site that you're transferring this to or the location you're transferring this to, you have to have the WP Vivid plugin installed. Now, obviously, this means you're going to need to have WordPress installed as well, but it's just a clean copy of WordPress. If you're running cPanel, you can very quickly and easily just install it directly from there. It takes a few seconds, then simply go in and install the particular plugin. Once you've done that, we need to log into the destination site Make sure the plugin's active and then jump over to the settings section and come over to the key tab. Now in here, we've got the option to generate a new key. And this is the key that identifies all the details you need to transfer or migrate your site. So we'll hit generate. We'll let that generate the key. And as you can see, it pops up and tells us exactly what information we need and how long this key will last before it expires. Now you can change this if you want to, to shorter or longer periods of time, whatever works for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy that. So we'll just right click, choose copy. Then we'll go back over to our site that's our source site. And what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll say we'll paste that key into here. Then we've got the options to go through and say, what do we want to transfer the database and the files? In other words, the entire site, all files or just the database. Let's hit save to make sure this key is now in place and everything is ready. So providing everything is set up and working for us, all we need to do now is hit the transfer option, wait a little bit of period of time, making sure that 301 redirect plugins and any firewall security plugins you may have and caching plugins are disabled on the destination site. And ultimately, I would say to disable those temporarily on the source site, just to make sure. So let's hit transfer and providing everything is in place now that will transfer this entire site database and all over to our new destination. So let's hit transfer and let that run through the whole process. So this might take a little bit of time depending upon the size of the site that you're transferring, the speed of the server, your internet connection and various other factors. So we'll let that run through and once that's finished, I'll come back and we'll take a look at what happens next. So this is the first stage of the migration. We've created it, we've linked it and we've sent the files over to our destination location. So if we come back over now to our destination website, you can see we're back into WP Vivid. What we need to do now is make sure on the backup and restore tab, but if we scroll down, you can see we've got any listed backups. Now you can see I've run through this two times. So we've got one from 335 and one from 338. So all we need to do is choose the right one in the same way that we restore a backup previously in the last example. However, this time it's gonna restore the entire site on a different domain. So what we do is we'll click on restore, and this time we're presented with some slightly different options. You can see we've got two different choices. We can restore and replace the original domain URL with the new one, the migration location, or we can restore it and keep the original URL, leaving it unchanged. Because we're transferring it to a different domain, what we need to do is choose restore and replace original domain. Once you've done that, we're gonna click on restore, and let it go through the process. Again, you can see we're presented with the option to make sure that we're happy to continue and everything's in place. We'll say, okay, let that run through the process now of updating all the data, migrating everything over from our original site to our new destination site. So I'll pause this, come back when it's finished. And there we go. Once again, we're presented with the option to say we're happy, everything is in place. We click okay, and that is now done. Let's just take a look at the actual site itself. And we should see that everything is now in place with our new migrated site. Everything is looking exactly as it did on the original site. And there we go, there's our site. And if we jump back over to our test site where we took this from, you can see it's exactly the same. So it's a very quick and easy way of able to transfer this all done incredibly simply just by using the plugin on the destination and the source location. Now, before we wrap things up on the video, there's a couple of things I want to show you. If we jump over to the settings section, you can see we can fine tune and configure to make sure that we've got the optimal settings for whatever we're trying to do, whether that's backing up, restoring, scheduling, migrating, and so on. 
So you can see we can go through the process of compressing files every X number of megabytes. So you can make sure that your file sizes are within any constraints you might have with the server that you've got. You can break them down to multiple pieces. So instead of having one massive file, you could end up with smaller files, which you can then use to restore through the restore option. And you can upload multiple zip files in there to make the whole process much quicker and easier. If as part of the backup or the restoration process, you have a website that has lots of very large files in there, you can use the second option to exclude any files that go over a certain size. So if you're dealing with files like video files or something like that, you can easily remove those from your backups to make sure that you don't end up with huge backups for files that you don't necessarily need to backup as part of the entire process. You can also do things like deal with the PHP script execution timeout. Now, if you're dealing with very big backups, you may find that the actual process times out. In other words, it's the server saying, well, you've been trying to do something for way too long. I'm now going to stop you from carrying on. Then you can adjust this as well. And it works in seconds. So you can make sure that you've got the optimal setup to make sure that your backups work perfectly. Now, to work in conjunction with these timeout, you can also set the PHP memory limit inside WP Vivid. What you can do in here is you can set this to a value that's going to work correctly, but just bearing in mind that not every server or host will actually allow you to set it directly inside this plugin. So if you find this doesn't work, you may need to contact your hosting company to find out how to increase the memory, or alternatively, you could use a .user.ini file and you can configure it directly inside there. It's a very easy way of doing it. There's plenty of information on the internet on how to utilize the .user.ini file. You can also then go through and configure some other things like the number of backups that are going to be retained, how many times you try if you're encountering a timeout server error, whether you calculate the file size for folders and database before you backup and display a tab in the page of the admin navigation menu. So up to you. Then you've got the option to specify the name of the backups folder. You can adjust this to whatever you want. And if you want to include the actual domain that you're backing up inside the file name, you can enable or disable that. So if you're using one location to store a lot of different backups, it makes sense to name each of those backups with the actual website you're backing up from. Just makes your life that a little bit easier. You then got remove out of date backups. You can specify how that works. You can also choose how you archive your backups. So you can see only archive without compressing. So it will not take much CPU usage. This is good for if you're on shared hosting, which might have limitations. However, if you've got more space or you've got more resources available, like a VPS or dedicated server environment, you could then compress these backups on the fly. You can also then go through and say you want to email a report out. Now it's recommended that you use an SMTP plugin for WordPress to make sure you put your own SMTP email details in there. And if you want to use that, then you can follow the information on this particular setup section. Now at the bottom, you can see we've got the options to clean junk. So we can go through and clean up anything we don't want, like logs, the backup cache, temporary files, and so on. And you can also export your settings. So if you are setting this up and you want to keep the exact same settings on a different copy of WP Vivid, you can export these settings and then simply import it on the destination setup. Quick and easy way of configuring things without having to go through the same process time and time again. And that really is all there is to the settings in here. It should give you pretty much all the things you need to use this plugin to its optimal advantages. And I think it's a very simple and straightforward way of dealing with things that's not necessarily requiring someone to be incredibly tech savvy to get their head around what's going on. And to me, that's one of the strengths of this particular plugin. It doesn't require you to be some kind of tech savvy genius to get your head around what's going on. You can get in there and start tweaking and configuring things to your own perfect way, or you can just leave it set up at default and pretty much start working with it straight away. So I found it's a very simple way of not only being able to back up and restore things, but also to be able to migrate sites. Great if you're dealing with one location to build a website and then you want to offload it to the client or migrate it somewhere else, you can do it inside here as well as dealing with backups and so on. So I would say if you are looking for a migration and a backup software that isn't gonna cost you any money, but still has all the features you should need, allows you to back up locally, remotely, works with things like Dropbox and Google and so on. It's just very, very easy. So I highly recommend checking it out for yourself if you're looking for something that does this. So there we go, that's the WP Vivid plugin. Hopefully what this video has demonstrated is it's incredibly easy to use and offers a ton of functionality all for no cost to you whatsoever. And as we know, backing up your website or restoring it after a problem is something you need to make sure you have in place. If you want to migrate your website, again, WP Vivid does exactly that incredibly easily. So what do you think of WP Vivid? Have you tested it out yourself? Would this make you look at this particular plugin? Maybe replace an existing plugin or two that you're using? Let me know in the comment section below. 
As always, all the applicable links are in the description below so you can check out WP Vivid for yourself and see exactly what's on offer. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. That's perfectly fine. But as always, let me know in the comment section below what you did or didn't like about this video. Let me create better content for you moving forward. Well, as always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.